Hey folks, I am back today to do a real quick video on adding a paper chart into Markup RXP. So, finally found, <laughs> no, I switched to my iPad instead of my Samsung tablet. I don't know, bottom, bottom line is I much prefer an iPad to a Samsung or to any Android, but that's neither here nor there. We know where the pictures are today, and we can walk you through how to how to insert. So you want to open up your app first off, of course. You want to go down to the bottom right corner, hit add a new project. First one I'm going to add is the photo. Okay, you're going to get a pop up that says extra mode enabled. I would say, I will say yes to that because it will load a more detailed version of the picture that I took, which allows you to adjust things a little bit easier. So I'm going to, I'm going to do this one just because. Okay. Now it brought it in landscape because that was the position I took the picture in, but I would really like my chart to be straight portrait. So with that, you're going to up here at the top left hand corner, you can adjust, you can rotate the chart 90 degrees at a time. So I'm going to rotate it this way 90. That brings it right to where we want it. If you prefer the chart to be in landscape, you can let it that way. If it's something, a chart that you're doing that, um, works better for you to have it landscape just let it that way or if it comes in portrait turn it to landscape whichever works what you do then is hit once you have it lined positioned correctly then you go to the top right and hit the next button that's going to bring you to the screen where you adjust things and I'm going to bring the next one in first because from here forward the steps are the same whether it's a picture that you took or whether it's something that you scanned so let's cancel this and let's bring in a scanned photo so you do the same thing only this time you are going to pick image files because a scanned photo is technically an image. You're going to say yes again. And I actually have this in twice. This is the one I practiced on last night after we got off the stream. This is the one I brought in this morning. So I'm going to bring in the scan. Now, for some reason, it doesn't bring that in quite the same way. However, if you enlarge it and you have your grid, on this one, you can see it pretty much brought the grid in. It's pretty much perfect when you do them scan. The, the trick is to have it as flat as possible, okay? So this one looks okay. It did not want us to do anything, which that's wonderful. So let's close that one out. Let's go back and bring in the saved photo again, and then we'll show you how to adjust. So we're going to use this one again. We're going to turn it. We're going to say next. And now we're back to this screen where you have these handles that you can adjust. So this is the place that you're going to line things up to make your grid. All right. So I'm going to, the trick is here, make this as large, as large as you, well, let's bring these handles in first. 
I get too large. So first of all, bring your handles in pretty close so that you can then make things pretty large so that you can see what you're doing. Okay, I'm just moving it with my stylus. You can use your finger, whichever works for you. So I'm gonna start at the top. Now, if you notice, this was not completely flat. Do you see that little buckle in that top left-hand corner? Okay, so this is where um, having things completely flat is a help, but my chart had a little bit of a bend in it. But what I'm going to do is bring this corner down. Okay, now do you see how when I get down here to the corner, I just want to set that right on the corner. And this is where the bigger you make it, the easier that is to see. There is above it like a magnifier that helps you see a little bit better. So, and sometimes you just tap it a little bit to move it around. So let's go over here to the other corner. Yes, I could go like this and go over here easier. <laughs> Okay, but let's go over here to the other corner and do the same thing. The bigger you have it, the easier it is to move this in and align it to where it needs to be. Okay, this is a little harder, this corner, because it's on a, the surface is dark. Okay, so then... Yeah, this wasn't exactly flat. Let's go down to the next corner. And again, make it big. And bring it up to the corner. Right. And let's go over. Okay. And this is where you just have to fiddle. You just have to fiddle around with it. Now, the better picture you take, the easier this is. So, when you look at this, well, this looks pretty straight across the bottom. That looks pretty okay. So you just want to go around and, and check things out. Sometimes they're going to be a little bit off. Okay. This going up the side here looks pretty good. Let's go up the other side. Okay, here's where things get a little bit skewed. Can you see this? We start off, our bottom corner is pretty good. Okay, bottom corner looks good. But as we go up, do you see the green starting to come outside? Outside of the, the edge of the chart. So that corner is off. It looks like it's substantially off. Okay, so we're going to go all the way to the top. Wow. Wow. And we're going to pull this back in. Like that. 
Okay. And then I'm going to scroll. Okay, now that looks pretty good again. Okay. See, that looks like it's lined up fairly well. Okay. So let's check across the top. Across the top is where I anticipated we were going to have some issue because of that crinkle. But it does not look too bad. I mean, it is up over the line a bit. The chart edge just a bit. And that is all because of it not being flat. So... I don't know how, this is what I tried to play with last night, and I'm just going to bring that in a little bit and try and compensate for that wrinkle. It may cut a little bit of this, well, you can't see, of this top stitch. It might skew that a bit, but when you go across, at least until you get to the middle, it's not too bad. And there's no way for me to adjust this, this divot here, because if I pull this up, okay, so I just may have to stay down here and compensate. Okay, so once you have it lined up, as best that you can get things lined up, now the whole bottom line or the whole point in here is to get this as perfect as you can. Try very hard to have your chart as flat as you can because that's going to give, if you're taking a picture, as you saw, if you're doing a scan, it really goes in very easily. You know, if you have a printer scanner and you can scan it, it goes in no pro really pretty much no problem. Unless maybe you have a chart that um, is on one page. It's a small chart. The chart is part of the is on the page, but then there's also writing on the page. You can then go in and when you are, you'll go to this particular screen and you just outline the chart itself. And then next it's going to ask you, do you want to outline the chart only or the whole page? So especially in that case where you have writing and the chart, you want to do chart only. I'm going to do that here and say chart only. Now, it tells me I have a grid, but I still need to adjust it a bit. So, okay. So, that would be this one. And then when you open it up and go big, you can see that there are places. The red grid is the grid we put on. Underneath is your actual grid from your chart. So you can see there's places where the red lines and the gray lines on the grid don't match. So this is where you want to do some more tweaking if you can, because when you search, markup is going to use the red grid. Okay. And do you see how the red grid goes through the center of some of the um, squares on your chart. So this again is where we would do some more tweaking to try and line and see the closer we get to that wrinkle in the chart, the worse this gets to the point where it just drops down a whole line. So this section will work the same way. Only you don't have the, the circles. You just use um, 
sorry, you just go into adjust grid and then you basically have a screen like you had before. So you do the same thing where you just play around with, oh, we got to go next. You're already lined up, so you want to go next and you just play around with these until you can once again get it as close as possible. Now, something that may help you. Chart outline. Oh, first of all, go under chart outline options and click free drag and apply that because that is going to let you drag things wherever you need them to do. Then go down to set the chart size. We know that this chart is, I'm going to say 110, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 103, by, okay, it is right, 103 by 132. But this is where if this, these numbers do not match the number, the stitch count of your chart, this is where you would adjust that. So our stitch count's correct. So now we're under free drag and we can just fiddle around with this a little bit. to see if we can get things lined up a bit better. So again, it's just you with a chart that has a wrinkle in it, you might not get it perfect. And what I was finding last night when I was messing with this was I was able to get it pretty good at some parts of the chart, but not the whole chart because of that being askewed a little bit. And sometimes after you move it, you just got to wait a smidge for it to make those corrections. And what was happening to me see there it looks pretty good but then you go over here and it gets a little wonky again. So again, it's just, it's not too, see, you can see here how it, how it bows. So this isn't too bad. Actually, this is, well, see right in here, right in above this, okay, you have the fox, and then to the left of that is that tree, or triangle, or whatever it is, and that's still skewed a bit, so I have to go down here to this center. to try and move that. Come out a bit. 
But you see what happens when it's not perfectly flat. So this screen is where you play around and you you try to adjust things to get things as close as you can. And if you're you think you got it reasonably well, Okay, I'm going to say, just for kicks and giggles, that this is going to be pretty good. When you're done doing all of that, you just click done, and you're back to your markup page. So let's just see. Let's bring this in a little closer, and then we'll... Let's just see how well, understandably, there are going to be parts that are not going to... Um, line up correctly but let's just try on the fox oh let me make it a little bigger we should be able to Okay, I'm not sure it's going to let you search, but is it going to see it's it's going to be a little bit askewed, but like I said, if you have a a picture that's perfect. Or that's flatter it's going to mark it up a bit better so there we go so see you can see this is still off let's go bigger here you can see how this is this is still off so we would have to go back in and I don't know why they got elongated like that but anyway We'd have to go back in and adjust the grid some more and say yes. And that's going to take us back to this and play around a little bit more until go to the next, until you get it to what you want it to be. Now, oh, I have the chart in the other room. Now, for some reason, it went to tell me that it's 74 by 101. Well, we know the columns were 103. And what what was the... Oh, golly. I forget what the... But we know this 71 is wrong, or 74 is wrong. And I'm going to say it was like 130 something. That's why our blocks were so big. So you change this. Let me go get the chart quick. Okay, it's 100 by 130. So you'd set these numbers under the chart size to 100 by 130. Now that makes your grids the correct size. Okay, so now when you're messing with these and trying to line things up
at least you're going to have blocks that are the same size. But again, you keep going through, you go through until you get it. reasonably close to what it should be and if you got a wrinkle in your chart just know that it's not going to get perfect okay so let's just say we're done and let's go back into this and let's undo that now let's try and mark up again See how our squares are now lined. Oops. See how our squares are now lined up. They're not 100% perfect, but they're stitchable. Okay, I marked those two by mistake. But they are stitchable. Okay. You are at a point where. Okay, maybe when you get down here closer to the corners where this was all skewed because of the wrinkle, it might not be as... Okay, don't double tap, Karen. Okay, it might not be quite as easy to read, but seriously, on this chart, it's going to be easier to read without having it in a program and worse comes to worse you could just mark these okay I stitched that I stitched that I stitched that I stitched that okay it's not a deal breaker on a chart like this. So let's look at let's look at the PDF one that I brought in. Okay, because that one loaded wonderfully the first time. Okay, that was I scanned it, saved it as a PDF, and now it's going to mark up just fine. So my suggestion is if you have access, say, scan them before you put them in. Okay. Even if you save it as an image, scan it before you put it in. It's going to give you a better, flatter copy to work with when it comes to grid aligning. It can be done the other way, but like I said, if you have a wrinkle or a little bit of a fold that doesn't straighten out, probably if I would have, I don't know if I could do it, but if I would have, for example, ironed this to make sure all these little, little imperfections were flat, it may have gone in just as well as this one did. So... That's the essence of how you um, insert a chart or insert a paper chart into uh, markup. I hope it gives you at least a general idea on how to do it. Again, it's not perfect. I am learning this right along with you guys. I don't know all the ins and outs. So, you know, you have to bear with me and understand that, that I am not the expert. There is a Facebook group for this application. If you have questions that you certainly, not that you can't ask me, but I'm probably, uh, chances are I may know the answer, but chances are I might not know the answer. So if you join the Facebook group, there are very knowledgeable people there who can help you. The um, developer is very active in that group, and he answered some of my questions. So I would suggest that you look into that. So I hope you found this helpful. And with that, I will see you next time. And remember, 
There are no rules in CrossFit, only the ones you make for yourself. Have a great rest of the week. And if you're in the United States, have a very happy 4th of July weekend. Till next time. Bye-bye.